Good evening, and welcome to my stream. I am the queer Christian anarcho-communist. On this show, I read what I hope is easy to understand theory. That is, things smart people wrote that explains how the world works, why it sucks for workers, people of color, disabled people, queer people, the poor, and basically everyone that isn't a rich, white, cishet man, from the point of view that God is on the side of the poor. The point is to spur all of us on to take action. As Karl Marx said, the philosophers have only interpreted the word in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. If we workers want to emancipate ourselves, we can't do that by listening to streams or giving money to self-proclaimed leftists on Patreon. We need to do the work of bringing to birth a new world from the ashes of the old. To that end, there are several organizations that need our time, talent, money, and effort. In particular, I want to signal boost Food Not Bonds, the Black Rose Anarchist Federation, the John Brown Gun Club, the Socialist Rifle Association, and the Industrial Workers of the World. I strongly support the IWW in particular because it is my union, and I believe in its mission as an organization of, by, and for the working class. So I want to begin this and each stream by reading part of the preamble to the IWW Constitution. The working class and the employing class have nothing in common. There can be no peace so long as hunger and want are found among millions of the working people and the few who make up the employing class have all the good things of life. Between these two classes, a struggle must go on until the workers of the world organize as a class, take possession of the means of production, abolish the wage system, and live in harmony with the earth. Instead of the conservative motto, a fair day's wage for a fair day's work, we must inscribe on our banner the revolutionary watchword, abolition of the wage system. It is the historic mission of the working class to do away with capitalism. The army of production must be organized, not only for everyday struggle with capitalists, but also to carry on production when capitalism shall have been overthrown. By organizing industrially, we are forming the stru structure of the new society within the shell of the old. Now that that's out of the way, here's our reading for today. An anarchist FAQ. This is a lengthy document that can easily be found by typing in an anarchist FAQ into your search engine of choice. See it over on the right-hand side of the screen. And uh, it looks, the landing page for the FAQ looks like this. This is the one specifically. There's a couple out there that have similar titles. This is the one we'll be reading from. This work was begun in 1995 and has continued to evolve and develop uh, the mo ever since. The most recent revision was published a few days ago on March 17th, 2020. The entire thing is over a thousand pages and we'll be reading it off and on over the next year or so, alternating with other readings. <clears throat> Tonight we'll be reading some of the introductory material, though we will not read the retrospective articles after 21 years and after 10 years. Uh, we will instead be reading the introduction and intro to volume one, and then beginning the very first section, section A, what is anarchism. As usual, the text is here on the right hand side of the screen. And now, we begin. An Anarchist FAQ Introduction Proletarians of the world, look into the depths of your own beings Seek out the truth and realize it yourselves. 
You will find it nowhere else. Peter Arshinov, The History of the Machnavist Movement. This FAQ is written by anarchists across the world in an attempt to present anarchist ideas and theory to those interested in it. It is, a, it is a cooperative effort produced by a virtual working group, and it exists to present a useful organizing tool for anarchists, for anarchists online, and hopefully in the real world. It desires to present arguments on why you should be an anarchist, as well as refuting common arguments against anarchism and other proposed solutions to the social problems we face. If anarchist ideas seem so at odds with common sense, such as, of course, we need a state and capitalism, we need to indicate why anarchists think like we do. Unlike many political theories, anarchism rejects flip answers and instead bases its ideas and ideals in an in-depth analysis of society and humanity. In order to do both anarchism and the reader justice, we have summarized our arguments as much as possible without making them simplistic. We know that it is a lengthy document and may put off the casual observer, but its length is avoidable. Er, unavoidable. Sorry. Readers may consider our use of extensive quoting as being an example of a quotation being a handy thing to have about, saving one the trouble of thinking for one's self. A. A. Mill. This is not the case, of course. We have included extensive quotations by many anarchist figures for three reasons. Firstly, to indicate that we are not making up our claims of what certain anarchists thought or argued for. Secondly, and most importantly, it allows us to link the past voices of anarchism with its present adherents. And lastly, the quotes are used for their ability to convey ideas succinctly, rather than as an appeal to authority. In addition, many quotes are used in order to allow readers to investigate the ideas of those quoted and to summarize facts and to save space. For example, a quote by Noam Chomsky on the development of capitalism by state protection ensures that we base our arguments on facts without having to present all the evidences and references Chomsky uses. Similarly, we quote experts on certain subjects, such as economics, for example, to support and bolster our analysis and claims. We should also indicate the history of this FAQ. It was started in 1995 when a group of anarchists got together in order to write an FAQ refuting the claims of certain libertarian capitalists to being anarchists. Those who were involved in the project had spent many an hour online refuting claims by these people that capitalism and anarchism could go together. Finally, a group of net activists decided the best thing was to produce an FAQ explaining why anarchism hates capitalism and why anarcho-capitalists are not anarchists. However, after the suggestion of Mike Cuban, who maintains the Critiques of Libertarianism web page, it was decided that a pro-anarchist FAQ would be a better idea than an anti-anarcho-capitalist. So the anarchist FAQ was born. It still bears some of the signs of its, present, of its past history. For example, it gives the likes of Ayn Rand, Murray Rothbard, and so on far too much space outside of Section F. They really are not that important. However, as they present extreme examples of everyday capitalist ideology and assumptions, they do have their uses. They state clearly the authoritarian implications of capitalist ideology, which its more moderate supporters try to hide or minimize. I think that we have produced a useful online resource for anarchists and other anti-capitalists to use. Perhaps in the light of this, we should dedicate this anarchist FAQ to the many online libertarian capitalists who, because of their inane arguments, prompted us to start this work. Then again, that would give them too much credit. Outside the net, they are irrelevant, and on the net, they are just annoying. As you may guess, sections F and G 
contain the bulk of this early anti-libertarian FAQ and are included purely to refute the claim that an anarchist can be a supporter of capitalism that is relatively common on the net. In the real world, this would not be required as almost all anarchists think that anarcho-capitalism is an oxymoron and its supporters are not part of the anarchist movement. While coming from a very specific reason, the FAQ has expanded into more than we originally imagined. It has become a general introduction about anarchism, its ideas, and history. Because anarchism recognizes that there are no easy answers and that freedom must be based on individual responsibility, the FAQ is quite in-depth. It also challenges a lot of assumptions. We have had to cover a lot of ground. We also admit that some of the frequently asked questions we have included are more frequently asked than others. This is due to the need to include relevant arguments and facts, which otherwise may not have been included. We are sure that many anarchists will not agree 100% with what we have written in the FAQ. That is to be expected in a movement based upon individual freedom and critical thought. However, we are sure that most anarchists will agree with most of what we present and respect those parts with which they do disagree as genuine expressions of anarchist ideas and ideals. The anarchist movement is marked by a widespread disagreement and arguments about various aspects of anarchist ideas and how to apply them. But also, we must add, a widespread tolerance of differing viewpoints and a willingness to work together, in spite of minor disagreements. We have attempted to reflect this in the FAQ and hope we have done a good job in presenting the ideas of all the anarchist tendencies we discuss. There is no desire to write in stone what anarchism is and is not. Instead, the FAQ is a starting point for people to read and learn for themselves about anarchism and translate that learning into direct action and self-activity. By so doing, we make anarchism a living theory, a product of individual and social self-activity. Only by applying our ideas in practice can we find their strengths and limitations, and so develop anarchist theory in new directions, and in light of new experiences. We hope that the FAQ both reflects and aids this process of self-activity and self-education. We are sure that there are many issues that the FAQ does not address. If you think of anything we could add, or feel you have a question and answer which should be included, get in contact with us. The FAQ is not our property, but belongs to the whole anarchist movement and so aims to be an organic, living creation. We desire to see it grow and expand with new ideas and inputs from as many people as possible. If you want to get involved with the FAQ, then contact us. Similarly, if others, particularly anarchists, want to distribute all or part of it, then feel free. It is a resource for the movement. For this reason, we have copy-lefted an anarchist FAQ. See gnu.org for details. By so doing, we ensure that the FAQ remains a free product available for use by all. One last point. Language has changed a lot over the years, and this applies to anarchist thinkers too. The use of the term man to refer to humanity is one such change. Needless to say, in today's world, such usage is inappropriate as it effectively ignores half the human race. For this reason, the FAQ has tried to be gender neutral. However, this awareness is relatively recent, and many anarchists, even female ones like Emma Goldman, used the term man to refer to humanity as a whole. When we are quoting past comrades who use man in this way, it obviously means humanity as a whole rather than the male sex. When possible, we add woman, women, her, and so on. But if this would result in making the quote unreadable, we have left it as it stands. We hope this makes our position clear. So we hope that this FAQ entertains you and makes you think. Hopefully it will produce a few more anarchists and speed up the creation of an anarchist society. If all else fails, we have enjoyed ourselves creating the FAQ and have shown anarchism to be a viable, coherent political idea.
We dedicate this work to the millions of anarchists, living and dead, who tried and are trying to create a better world. An anarchist FAQ was officially released on July 19, 1996 for that reason, to celebrate the Spanish Revolution of 1936 and the heroism of the Spanish anarchist movement. We hope that our work here helps make the world a freer place. The following self-proclaimed anarchists are mostly responsible for this FAQ. Ian McKay, main contributor and editor. Gary Elkin. David Neal. Ed Boreas. I would like to thank the following for their contributions and feedback. Andrew Flood. Mike Ballard. Francois Coquet. Jamal Hanna. Mike Hubert. Greg Alt. Chuck Munson. Pauline McCormick. Mr. McCabb, Kevin Carson, Sean Wilbur, Nicholas Evans, and our comrades on the Anarchy, One Union, and Organize mailing lists. An Anarchist FAQ version 15.2, copyright 1995 to 2019, the Anarchist FAQ Editorial Collective. Ian McKay, Gary Elkin, Dave Neal, Ed Boris. Permission is granted to copy, distribute, and or modify the document under the terms of the new free documentation license. Now, introduction to volume one. As many anarchists have noted, our ideal must be one of the most misunderstood and misrepresented political theories on the planet. An anarchist FAQ aims to change this by presenting the basics of anarchist theory and history, refuting the most common distortions and nonsense about it, and providing anarchists with a resource they can use to aid their arguments and struggles for freedom. This is important, as much of the ground covered in an anarchist FAQ was provoked by having to critique other theories and refute attacks on anarchism. Anarchism has changed over the years and will continue to evolve and change as circumstances do likewise, and new struggles are fought and hopefully won. It is not some fixed ideology, but rather a means of understanding an evolving world and to change it in libertarian directions. As such, an anarchist FAQ seeks to place specific aspects of anarchism into their historical context. For example, certain aspects of Proudhon's ideas can only be understood by remembering that he lived at a time when the vast majority of working people were peasants and artisans. Many commentators, particularly Marxist ones, seem to forget this, and that he supported cooperatives for large-scale industry. Much the same can be said of Bakunin, Tucker, and so on. I hope an anarchist FAQ will help anarchism continue to develop to meet new circumstances by summarizing what has gone before so that we can build on it. We also seek to draw out what anarchists have in common while not denying their differences. After all, Individualist anarchist Benjamin Tucker would have agreed with communist anarchist Peter Kropotkin when he stated that anarchism was the no-government form of socialism. While some anarchists seem to take more time in critiquing and attacking their comrades over ultimately, usually minor differences than fighting oppression, I personally think that this activity, while at times essential, is hardly the most fruitful use of our limited resources particularly when it is about possible future developments, whether it's on the economic nature of a free society or our attitude to a currently non-existing syndicalist union. So we have discussed the differences between anarchist schools of thought, as well as within them, but we have tried to build bridges by stressing where they agree, rather than creating walls. Needless to say, not all anarchists will agree with what is in an anarchist FAQ, it is, after all, as we have stressed, an anarchist FAQ, not the anarchist FAQ, as some comrades flatteringly call it. From my experience, most anarchists agree with most of it, even if they have quibbles about certain aspects of it. I know that comrades do point others to it. I once saw a Marxist complain that anarchists always suggested that he read an anarchist FAQ, so I explained to him that this is what having a frequently asked questions was all about. So an anarchist FAQ is only a guide, 
you need to discover anarchism for yourself and develop and apply it in your own way. Hopefully, an anarchist FAQ will help that process by presenting an overview of anarchism and indicating what it is, what it is not, and where to find out more. Some may object to the length of many of the answers, and that is a valid point. However, some questions and issues cannot be dealt with quickly and be considered as remotely cannot be dealt with quickly and be considered as remotely convincing. For example, simply stating that anarchists think capitalism is exploitative and that claims otherwise are wrong, maybe both correct and short, is hardly a convincing reply to someone aware of the various defenses of profit, interest, and rent invented by capitalist economists. Similarly, stating that Marxist ideology helped destroy the Russian Revolution is, again, both correct and short, but it would never convince a Leninist who stresses the impact of the Civil War on Bolshevik practice. Then there is the issue of sources. We have tried to let anarchists speak for themselves on most issues, and that can take space. Some of the evidence we use is from books and articles the general reader may not have easy access to, so we have tried to present full quotes to show that our use is correct. The number of times I've tracked down references to discover they did not say what was suggested is sadly quite numerous. Moreover, refuting distortions and inventions about anarchism can be lengthy simply because of the necessity of providing supporting evidence. Time and again, the same mistakes and straw man arguments are regurgitated by those unwilling or unable to look at the source material. Marxists are particularly bad at this, simply repeating ad nauseum the assertions of Marx and Engels as if they were accurate. Assumptions are piled onto assumptions, assertions repeated as if they were factual. An anarchist FAQ seeks to address these and present evidence to refute them once and for all. Simply saying that some statement is false may be correct, but hardly convincing unless you already know a lot about the subject. So I hope that readers will understand and find even the longest answers interesting and informative. One of the advantages of an FAQ format is that people can simply go to the sections they are interested in and skip others. This volume covers what anarchism is, what it comes from, what it has done, what it is against and why, as well as what anarchism is not, that is, showing why anarcho-capitalism is not a form of anarchism. The latter may come as a surprise to most. Few anarchists, never mind the general population, have heard of that specific ideology. It is United States-based on the in the main, and those who have heard of it may wonder why we bothered giving why we bothered, given its obvious non-anarchist nature. Sadly, we need to cover this ground simply because some academics insist in listing it alongside genuine forms of anarchism, and that needs to be exposed for the nonsense it is. Few serious thinkers would list fascism alongside socialism regardless of whether its supporters call their ideology national socialism or national syndicalism. Unsurprisingly, right libertarians do precisely that. No one took the Soviet bloc states seriously when they described themselves as people's democracies, nor considered their governments democratic. Anarchism seems to be excluded from such common sense, and so we find academics discussing anarcho-capitalists alongside anarchism simply, I suspect, because they call themselves anarchists. That almost all anarchists reject their claims to being anarchists does not seem to be a sufficient warning about taking such statements at face value. For obvious reasons, we have not wasted space in explaining why another U.S.-based ideology national anarchism is not anarchism. While some individual anarchists were racists, the notion that anarchism has anything in common with those who aim for racially pure nationalist communities is ridiculous. Even academics have not fallen for that, although almost all genuine anarchists Although for almost all genuine anarchists, anarcho-capitalism makes as little sense as anarcho-nationalism. There is Then there is the history of an anarchist FAQ. 
As indicated in the original introduction, the anarchist FAQ was prompted by battles with anarcho-capitalists online in the early 1990s. However, while anarcho while an anarchist FAQ may have started as a reply to the anarcho-capitalists, it is no longer that. It would be a mistake to think that they are more significant than they actually are, or that many anarchists bother with them. Most, I am sure, have never heard of it. I did consider whether it was wiser to simply exclude Section F from the book, but in the end I decided it should remain partly for the reasons above and partly because it does serve another more useful purpose. Neoliberalism is based in many ways on right libertarian dogmas, so critiquing those helps our struggle against actually existing capitalism and the current attacks by the ruling class. I do not wish anarchism to go the same way that libertarian has gone in the United States and to a lesser extent in the United Kingdom. Between the 1890s and 1970s, libertarian was simply a pseudonym for anarchist or similar socialist theories. However, the American free market right appropriated the label in the 1970s, and now it means supporters of minimal state or private state capitalism. Such is the power of having ideas that bolster the wealthy. The change in libertarian is such that some people talk about libertarian anarchism, as if you can have an authoritarian anarchism. That these people include anarcho-capitalists simply shows how ignorant of anarchism they actually are and how alien the ideology is to our movement. I have seen quite a few of them proclaim anarchism is simply a new form of Marxism, which shows their grasp of the subject. Equally bizarrely, these self-proclaimed libertarian anarchists are also those who most fervently defend the authoritarian social relationships inherent within capitalism. In other words, if authoritarian anarchists could exist, then the libertarian anarchists would be them. As an anarchist FAQ explains, being opposed to the state is a necessary but not sufficient condition for being an anarchist. Not only is this clear from the works of anarchist thinkers and anarchism as a social movement, but also from the nature of the idea itself. To be an anarchist, you must also be a socialist, that is, opposed to capitalist property and the exploitation of labor. It is no coincidence that Godwin and Proudhon independently analyzed private property from a libertarian perspective and drew similar conclusions, or that Kropotkin and Tucker considered themselves socialists. To deny this critique is to deny anarchism as a movement and as a socio-political theory, never mind its history and the aims of anarchists across the years. Furthermore, as an anarchist FAQ stresses, to be a consistent anarchist you must recognize that freedom is more than simply the ability to change masters. Anarchism means no authority. Anarchy. And to support social relationships marked by authority, hierarchy produces a self-contradictory mess, such as supporting forms of domination such as wage labor, which are essentially identical to those produced by the state, and sometimes admitted as such. Anarchism is fundamentally a theory of organization based on individuals associating together without restricting, and so denying and limiting, their freedom and individuality. This means that a consistent anarchism is rooted in free association within a context of self-management, decentralization, and bottom-up decision-making. <clears throat> that is, it is rooted in political and economic and social equality. While it is possible to be an anarchist while opposing exploitation, but not all forms of hierarchical social relationships, it is hardly logical nor a convincing position. An anarchist FAQ also seeks to go into subjects anarchists have traditionally been weak, weak on, such as economics, which is ironic as Proudhon made his name by his economic critiques. In this sense, it is a resource for anarchists both in terms of our own history and ideas, but also on subjects we inevitably come across in our struggles. Hopefully, the critiques we provide of capitalism, neoliberalism, and so forth will also be useful to other radicals. We have tried to indicate the quoted source 
uh, is an anarchist or libertarian. If in doubt, please look at the bibliography on the web page. This breaks references down into libertarian, anarchist and non-anarchist thinkers, or sympathetic accounts of anarchism, and non-libertarians, which, needless to say, includes right libertarians. It should go without saying that quoting an expert on one subject does not mean anarchists subscribe to their opinions on any others. Thus, if we quote, say, a Keynesian or post-Keynesian economist on how capitalism works, it does not imply we support their specific political recommendations. Some have criticized an anarchist FAQ for not including some of the more recent developments within anarchism, which is fair enough. I have asked on numerous occasions for critics to contribute a section on these, and of course for referenced corrections for any mistakes others think we have done. Nothing has been forthcoming, and we have usually discovered mistakes ourselves, and corrected them, although a steady flow of emails pointing out typos has come our way. We have always been a small collective, and we cannot do everything. This also explains why important social events like, say, the turn-of-the-century Argentinian revolt against neoliberalism is not discussed in section A.5. This is a wonderful example of anarchist ideas being spontaneously applied in practice during a mass revolt. Suffice to say, anarchist tendencies, ideas, and practices develop all the time, and anarchism is growing in influence. But if we continually added to an anarchist FAQ to reflect this, then it would never have become ready for publication. As it is, we have excluded most of the appendices from the book version. These remain available on the website, along with a lengthy links page. I would like to thank everybody who has helped and contributed directly and indirectly, knowingly and unknowingly, to an anarchist FAQ. As for authorship, an anarchist FAQ started as a collective effort and remained so for many years. I have been the only person involved from the start and done the bulk of the work on it. Moreover, the task of getting it ready for and revised for publication has fallen to me. I have enjoyed it in the main. This explains why the book has my name on it rather than a collective. I feel I have earned that right. As such, I claim responsibility for any typos and examples of bad grammar that remain. I have substantially revised an anarchist FAQ for publication, and while I have tried to find them all, I'm sure I have failed, particularly in sections that were effectively rewritten. I hope these do not detract from the book too much. Finally, on a personal note, I would like to dedicate this book to my partner and two lovely children. They are a constant source of inspiration, love, support, and hope, not to mention patience. If this mix work makes the world we live in better for them, then it has been more than worthwhile. For when it comes down to it, anarchism is simply about making the world a freer and better place. If we forget that, then we forget what makes us anarchists in the first place. Ian McKay, an anarchist FAQ. Introduction to Section A Modern civilization faces three potentially catastrophic crises. 1. Social breakdown, a shorthand term for rising rates of poverty, homelessness, crime, violence, alienation, drug and alcohol abuse, social isolation, political apathy, dehumanization, the deterioration of community structures of self-help and mutual aid, etc. 2. Destruction of the planet's delicate ecosystems on which all complex form of life depend. And 3. The proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, particularly nuclear weapons. Orthodox opinion, including that of establishment experts, mainstream media, and politicians, generally regards these crises as separable each having its own causes and therefore capable of being dealt with on a piecemeal basis in isolation from the other two. Obviously, however, this orthodox approach isn't working, since the problems in question are getting worse. Unless some better approach is taken soon, we are clearly headed for disaster, either from catastrophic war, ecological Armageddon, or a descent into urban savagery, or all of the above. Anarchism offers a unified and coherent way of making sense of these crises, 
by tracing them to a common source. This source is the principle of hierarchical authority, which underlies the major institutions of all civilized societies, whether capitalist or communist. Anarchist analysis therefore starts from the fact that all of our major institutions are in the form of hierarchies, that is, organizations that concentrate power at the top of a pyramid structure, such as corporations, government bureaucracies, armies, political parties, religious organizations, universities, etc. It then goes on to show how the authoritarian relations inherent in such hierarchies negatively affect individuals, their society, and culture. In the first part of this FAQ, sections A to E, we will present the anarchist analysis of hierarchical authority and its negative effects in greater detail. It should not be thought, however, that anarchism is just a critique of modern civilization, just negative or destructive, because it is much more than that. For one thing, it is also a proposal for a free society. Emma Goldman expressed what might be called the anarchist question as follows. The problem that confronts us today is how to be one's self and yet in oneness with others, to feel deeply with all human beings and still retain one's own characteristic qualities. In other words, how can we create a society in which the potential for each individual is realized but not at the expense of others? In order to achieve this, anarchists envision a society in which, instead of being controlled from the top down through hierarchical structures of centralized power, the affairs of humanity will, to quote Benjamin Tucker, be managed by individuals or voluntary associations. While later sections of the FAQ, sections I and J, will propose anarchism's positive proposals for ag organizing society in this way, from the bottom up, some of the constructive core of anarchism will be seen even in the earlier sections. The positive core of anarchism can even be seen in the anarchist critique of such flawed solutions to the social question as Marxism and right-wing libertarianism sections F and H, respectively. As Clifford Harper elegantly puts it, like all great ideas, anarchism is pretty simple when you get down to it. Human beings are at their best when they are living free of authority, deciding things amongst themselves rather than being ordered about. Due to their desire to maximize individual and therefore social freedom, anarchists wish to dismantle all institutions that repress people. Common to all anarchists is the desire to free society of all political and social coercive institutions which stand in the way of the development of a free humanity. Rudolf Rocker, Anarcho-Syndicalism As we'll see, all such institutions are hierarchies, and their repressive nature stems directly from their hierarchical form. Anarchism is a socio-economic and political theory, but not an ideology. The difference is very important. Basically, theory means you have ideas. An ideology means ideas have you. Anarchism is a body of ideas, but they are flexible, in a current constant state of evolution and flux, and open to modification in light of new data. As society changes and develops, so does anarchism. An ideology, in contrast, is a set of fixed ideas which people believe dogmatically, usually ignoring reality or changing it so as to fit with the ideology, which is, by definition, correct. All such fixed ideas are the source of tyranny and contradiction, leading to attempts to make everyone fit onto a Procrustean bed. This will be true regardless of the ideology in question, Leninism, objectivism, libertarianism, or whatever. All will have the same effect, the destruction of real individuals in the name of a doctrine, a doctrine that usually preserves the interest of some ruling elite. Or, as Michael Bakunin put it, until now, all human history has been only a perpetual and bloody immolation of millions of poor human beings in honor of some pitiless abstraction. 
God, country, power of state, national honor, historical rights, judicial rights, political liberty, public welfare. Dogmas are static and death-like in their rigidity, often the work of some dead prophet, religious or secular, whose followers erect his or her ideas into an idol, immutable as stone. Anarchists want the living to bury the dead so that the living can get on with their lives. The living should rule the dead, not vice versa. Ideologies are the nemesis of critical thinking and consequently of freedom, providing a book of rules and answers which relieve us of the burden of thinking for ourselves. In producing this FAQ on anarchism, it is not our intention to give you the correct answers or a new rule book. We will explain a bit about what anarchism has been in the past, but we will focus more on its modern forms and why we are anarchists today. The FAQ is an attempt to provoke thought and analysis on your part. If you are looking for a new ideology, then sorry, anarchism is not for you. While anarchists try to be realistic and practical, we are not reasonable people. Reasonable people uncritically accept what the experts and authorities tell them is true, and so they will always remain slaves. Anarchists know that, as Bakunin wrote. A person is strong only when he stands upon his own truth, when he speaks and acts from his deepest convictions. Then, Whatever the situation he may be in, he always knows what he must say and do. He may fall, but he cannot bring shame upon himself or his causes. What Bakunin describes is the power of independent thought, which is the power of freedom. We encourage you not to be reasonable, not to accept what others tell you, to think and act for yourself. One last point. To state the obvious, this is not the final word on anarchism. Many anarchists will disagree with much that is written here, but this is to be expected when people think for themselves. All we wish to do is to indicate the basic ideas of anarchism and give our analysis of certain topics based on how we understand and apply those ideas. We are sure, however, that all anarchists will agree with the core ideas we present, even if they may disagree with our application of them here and there. A1. What is anarchism? Anarchism is a political theory which aims to create anarchy, the absence of a master, of a sovereign. Pierre-Joseph Proudhon, What is Property? In other words, anarchism is a political theory which aims to create a society within which individuals freely cooperate together as equals. As such, anarchism opposes all forms of hierarchical control, be that control by the state or capitalist as harmful to the individual and their individuality, as well as unnecessary. In the words of anarchist L. Susan Brown, while the popular understanding of anarchism is of a violent anti-state movement, anarchism is a much more subtle and nuanced tradition than a simple opposition to government power, Anarchists oppose the idea that power and domination are necessary for society and instead advocate more cooperative, anti-hierarchical forms of social, political, and economic organization. The Politics of Individualism However, anarchism and anarchy are undoubtedly the most misrepresented ideas in political theory. Generally, the words are used to mean chaos, or without order. And so, by implication, anarchists desire social chaos and a return to the laws of the jungle. This process of misrepresentation is not without historical parallel. For example, in countries which have considered government by one person, monarchy, necessary, the words republic or democracy have been used precisely like anarchy, to imply disorder and confusion. Those with a vested interest in preserving the status quo will obviously wish to imply that opposition to the current system cannot work in practice, 
and that a new form of society will only lead to chaos. Or, as Enrico Malatesta expresses it, since it was thought that government was necessary and that without government there could be only disorder and confusion, it was natural and logical that anarchy, which means absence of government, should sound like absence of order. Anarchy. Anarchists want to change this common sense idea of anarchy so people will see that governments and other hierarchical social relationships are both harmful and unnecessary. Change opinion. Convince the public that government is not only unnecessary but extremely harmful, and then the word anarchy, just because it means absence of government, will come to mean for everybody natural order, unity of human needs and the interests of all, complete freedom without complete, uh, complete freedom within complete solidarity. This FAQ is part of the process of changing the commonly held ideas regarding anarchism and the meaning of anarchy. But that is not all. As well as combating the distortions produced by the common sense idea of anarchy, we also have to combat the distortions that anarchism and anarchists have been subjected to over the years by our political and social enemies. For, as Bartolomeo Vanzetti put it, anarchists are the radical of the radical, the black cats, the terror of many, of all the bigots, exploiters, charlatans, fakers, and oppressors. Consequently, we are also the more, more slandered, misrepresented, misunderstood, and persecuted of all. Vanzetti knew what he was talking about. He and his comrade, Nicola Sacco, were framed by the United States state for a crime which they did not commit and were effectively electrocuted for being foreign anarchists in 1927. So this FAQ will have to spend some time correcting the slanders and distortions that anarchists have been subjected to by the capitalist media, politicians, ideologues, and bosses. Not to mention the distortions by our erstwhile fellow radicals like liberals and Marxists. Hopefully, once we are finished, you will understand why those in power have spent so much time attacking anarchism. It is the one idea which can effectively ensure liberty for all and end all systems based on a few having power over the many. A.1.1 .1. What does anarchy mean? The word anarchy is from the Greek prefix an, or a, meaning not, the want of, the absence of, or the lack of, plus arkos, meaning a ruler, director, chief, person in charge, or authority. Or, as Peter Kropotkin put it, anarchy comes from the Greek words meaning contrary to authority. While the Greek words anarchos and anarchia are often taken to mean having no government or being without a government, as can be seen, the strict original meaning of anarchism was not simply no government. Anarchy means simply without a ruler, or more generally without authority, and it is in this sense that anarchists have continually used the word. For example, we find Kropotkin arguing that anarchism attacks not only capital, but also the main sources of the power of capitalism, law, authority, and the state. For anarchists, anarchy means not necessarily absence of order, as is generally supposed, but an absence of rule. Benjamin Tucker, instead of a book. Hence David Vike's excellent summary. Anarchism can be understood as the generic social and political idea that expresses negation of all power, sovereignty, domination, and hierarchical division, and a will to their dissolution. Anarchism is therefore more than anti-statism, even if government, the state, is appropriately the central focus of anarchist critique. Reinventing Anarchy For this reason, rather than being purely anti-government, or anti-state, anarchism is primarily a movement against hierarchy. Why? Because hierarchy is the organizational structure that embodies authority. Since the state is the highest form of this hierarchy, anarchists are by definition anti-state. 
But this is not a sufficient definition of anarchism. This means that real anarchists are opposed to all forms of hierarchical organization, not only the state. In the words of Brian Morris, the term anarchy comes from the Greek and essentially means no ruler. Anarchists are people who reject all forms of government or coercive authority, all forms of hierarchy and domination. They are therefore opposed to what the Mexican anarchist Flores Magón called the somber trinity, state, capital, and the church. Anarchists are thus opposed to both capitalism and to the state, as well as to all forms of religious authority. But anarchists also seek to establish or bring about, by varying means, a condition of anarchy, that is, a decentralized society without coercive institutions, a society organized through a federation of voluntary associations. Anthropology and Anarchism Reference to hierarchy in this context is a fairly recent development. The classical anarchists, such as Proudhon, Bakunin, and Kropotkin, did use the word, but rarely. They usually preferred authority, which was used as a shorthand for authoritarian. However, it's clear from their writings that theirs was a philosophy against hierarchy, against any inequality of power or privileges between individuals. Bakunin spoke of this when he attacked official authority, but defended natural influence, and also when he said, Do you want to make it impossible for anyone to oppress his fellow man? Then make sure that no one else shall possess power. The Political Philosophy of Bakunin As Jeff Drawn notes, while it has always been a latent part of the revolutionary project, only recently has this broader concept of anti-hierarchy arisen for more specific scrutiny. Nonetheless, the root of this is plainly visible in the Greek roots of the word anarchy, between anarchism and libertarianism, defining a new movement. We stress that this opposition to hierarchy is, for anarchists, not limited to just the state or government. It includes all authoritarian economic and social relationships, as well as political ones, particularly those associated with capitalist property and wage labor. This can be seen from Proudhon's argument that capital in the political field is analogous to government, the economic idea of capitalism, the politics or, of government or authority, and the theological idea of the church are three identical ideas linked in various ways. To attack one of them is equivalent to attacking all of them. What capital does to labor, and the state to liberty, the church does to the spirit. This trinity of absolutism is as baneful in practice as it is in philosophy. The most effective means for oppressing the people would be simultaneously to enslave its body, its will, and its reason. Thus we find Emma Goldman opposing capitalism, as it meant that man or woman must sell his or her labor, and therefore that his or her inclination and judgment are subordinated to the will of a master. Red Emma Speaks Forty years later, or earlier, Bakunin made the same point when he argued that under the current system, the worker sells his person and his liberty for a given time to the capitalist in exchange for a wage. Thus, anarchy means more than just no government means opposition to all forms of authoritarian organization and hierarchy. In Kropotkin's words, the origin of the anarchist inception of society lies in the criticism of the hierarchical organizations and the authoritarian conceptions of society, and the analysis of the tendencies that are seen in the progressive movements of mankind. For Malatesta, Anarchism was born in a moral revolt, revolt against social injustice, and that the specific causes of social ills should be found in capitalistic property and the state. When the oppressed sought to overthrow both state and property, then it was that anarchism was born. Enrico Malatesta, His Life and Ideas Thus, any attempt to assert that anarchy is purely anti-state is a misrepresentation of the word and the way it has been used by the anarchist movement. As Brian Morris argues, 
when one examines the writings of classical anarchists, as well as the character of anarchist movements, it is clearly evident that it has never had this limited vision of just being against the state. It has always challenged all forms of authority and exploitation and has been equally critical of capitalism and religion as it has been of the state. And just to state the obvious, anarchy does not mean chaos, nor do anarchists seek to create chaos and disorder. Instead, we wish to create a society based on individual freedom and voluntary cooperation. In other words, order from the bottom up, not disorder imposed from the top down by authorities. Such a society would be a true anarchy, a society without rulers. While we discuss what anarchy would look like in section I, Noam Chomsky sums up the key aspect when he stated that in a truly free society, any interaction among human beings that is more than personal, meaning that takes institutional forms of one kind or another, in community or workplace, family, larger society, whatever it may be, should be under the direct control of its participants. So that would mean workers' councils and industry, popular democracy and communities, interaction between them, free association in larger groups, up to organization of international society. Anarchism interview. Society would no longer be divided into a hierarchy of bosses and workers, governors and governed. Rather, an anarchist society would be based on free association in participatory organizations and run from the bottom up. Anarchists, it should be noted, try to create as much of this society today in their organizations, struggles, and activities as they can. And that is it for today. Tomorrow we will read from Angela Davis. <clears throat> then uh, the day after we will return to the Anarchist Epic. In that alternating fashion uh, as we continue reading through the FAQ. I hope you enjoyed this evening. I have no Patreon or anything like that. Instead of giving me or anyone else money, go to iww.org and join the Industrial Workers of the World, or one of the organizations I mentioned at the top of the stream. Remember, a better world is possible if we have the gumption to it. Good night. Go fight for the self-emancipation of the working class.